Hello, hello, and welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly yarny podcast where I, Sarah Korth of SDK Handmade, answer your yarny questions. Welcome. I am so, so glad you are here. How you doing? For real, how you doing? Um, we are in a big time of transition, and I don't know why transitioning back to school is always hard. For us, but we we are not good transitioners around here, and um, this this time has been no different. <laughs> so my anxiety has been high on behalf of the kids, though. Like, whew. anyways, I am so glad you are here. Hopefully, this is a time where you can relax and enjoy, maybe have a, a nice beverage of your choice and grab your project and just relax. This is a chill place. No pressure. No, um, no anxiety here. So thanks for being here. I really do enjoy this so, so much. Um, what am I wearing? I am wearing, it, it has friends. A week ago, two weeks ago, I was like, hallelujah. It was glorious. The weather was my favorite temperature, nice and chilly in the morning, warmed up to a pleasant, could still have the windows open. No more. It's a scorcher. Today, yesterday, today, and probably tomorrow too. Blah. I'm not a fan. So I'm going real light with the um, <laughs> yarny things today because frankly, I'm feeling hot. <laughs> so um, I have my Thea earrings. Guys, I leave these hanging out on my, um, my yarn wall. They're not just hung over a basket and they make me smile every time I see them. And so today I was like, yes, I need to wear those. So love them. It comes, the pattern comes with two sizes. So if you're like, that's fun, but that's real big, Sarah, there's a smaller size too. <laughs> and then I have my Vivian cuff on. This is, I have, I made a few of them, but this is one of my favorites. I used up scraps of yarn that I had left over from making, um, a Lavana shawl. So I have a shawl that matches this color of yarn in the bracelet. And um, so using this as a shawl cuff with that is super fun because then it matches. And also I'm, I'm obsessed with two things here. I mean, come even closer. I love these little pearly buttons, but then can you tell because the yarn is variegated, um, each button has a different color of yarn. <laughs> that I used to sew it, which I love. I love. So, so fun. So fun. That's what I'm wearing today. Um, what is bringing me joy, you guys? Um, my dad just came for a visit. It was the first time he visited since my mom passed, and it was just really, really good. It was really good. Um, as does major trauma often do. I really think that this has made us value each other even more and really appreciate all the time that we can spend together. So it was lovely. Uh, Dan helped me make more applesauce. Um, I, we are up to over 500 ounces of applesauce made. Um, all of that? No, almost all of that went home with dad because I can't, I can't eat all of it. <laughs> no, we could eat all of it. We can't store all of it. So I sent a bunch home with him. I sent some for my sister. I told him, give it to a few friends. So, um, <laughs> that was so much fun. The other thing that has brought me a lot of joy is, uh, I'm, I'm a little crazy. So, um, I go to a professional to get my hair cut every, I don't know, month and a half. Wait, no, no. 
Oh my gosh, I can count. I don't know. Every once in a while, but then in between, I cut my own hair. And normally what I do is I, I have the undercut, and so I'll shave that. Oh, that did funny things to my camera. Um, sorry. So I'll shave that, and then I'll just like trim up. Like, I get really heavy, and then I start to look like a mushroom. And so like I'll thin up in the heavy spots, and my, what I always say to myself is I'm fine as long as I don't cut too much, like little snips here and there, and it'll be okay. Um, and then when I get to the point where I'm like, I need a, a, a real, like, a good amount of hair trimmed, I'm like, it's time to go to the professional. So I was at that point, and um, I looked, and it was going to be another three weeks before I could get in, which is amazing. Uh, the person who cuts my hair is awesome. I am so glad that she is busy and that other appre people appreciate her awesomeness. I need to start planning ahead. But then I was like, okay, so I'm gonna trim and then I'm gonna plan ahead and make my next haircut with her. But then, why, why? I started looking at pictures in my, my Pinterest board that I have of haircuts. Do you have that? I do. <laughs> and I saw this really cute cut that was kind of wispy on the bottom and then had like this like long swoopy bang and I was like hmm I kind of want to do that and so I went for it guys I cut a lot of my hair <laughs> there were places normally I try to keep it like to about this much hair there were places that I cut like that much hair off um, and so I gave myself an overall haircut and I was, uh, partly terrified, but also like I, I like super short hair. So if I had a true hair emergency and it had to be cut much shorter, I would be fine with that. Uh, but I really like how it turned out. I am, it's a little hot, but I know when it cools off, I'm really going to be digging these like swoopy bangs. Um, I'm really loving the top and then I don't know, see how my hair just naturally, I'm sorry, there's like a little fly flying around in here. Um, it just kind of naturally like swoops out um, at the ends, especially when it's humid, <laughs> like it is now. Um, and it's just fun. It's what I was hoping for. And I didn't ruin it. So that's good. So yay, those things are bringing me joy. Okay, um, a couple things. Uh, for my small businesses that I want to share with you. This is one I've shared before, but I love it. Uh, ran out this morning, wanted to take coffee with me, so I put my cup in my uh, just store-bought mug, but I've put uh, stickers from uh, the business is called Apartment 2 Cards, and they've got, oh my gosh, the cutest cards, but also stickers and other little things, and there are some... Um, knitting and crochet themed ones that are lots and lots of fun. Uh, book themed ones. What are some other ones that they have? I don't know, lots of really cute. So go check them out. And then I've been teasing you for weeks with this um, fun yarn hanging out over here. I bought this a while back and I'm gonna share it with you right now. So this is a super fun yarn. Um, my local yarn shop owner, Sarah, goes to a trade show every June, July, June. And then she finds all sorts of amazing things and brings them back and then I want to buy them all. And so this is one of the things she brought back. Um, this is a yarn company called Making Tracks. Um, so it's a, maybe I could just read this out loud to you instead of just reading it to myself. So this is called Making Track. It's Tracks. It's 100% American wool and it says on a junction fiber mill. So proudly made in White River Junction VT. Junction Fiber Mill is a small batch wool processing mill in the heart of 
W-R-J. Wish I knew what that meant. <laughs> Started by two sheep farmers and friends, Amanda and Peggy. And it's just, it's just amazing. It looks hand spun. I don't know if it is, but it's gorgeous. Well, hey there, Weston. What are you up to? Um, <laughs> hey, boopy, boopy. Um, so here's what I got. I got, so each skein is a little different because it looks hand spun. So if you can see, these two are similar-ish in their colors. Um, and then I got one that is contrasting and I am, but has, you know, similar colors. I'm in debate. What do you think, Weston? I'm in debate of should I remake um, my Marin shawl, which has this really pretty, um, the body, and then it has an edging. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, and so I was thinking body edging, or should I design something? This is my problem. I buy yarn thinking, oh, I'll just remake this, which is a quick process. And then I go, no, maybe I should design something with it, which is a much longer process. <laughs> so let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Should I, um, should I start from scratch or should I just make, uh, remake, uh, my Marin shawl, um, in that gorgeous yarn? I really do love it so much. So links in the show notes. Do not worry about trying to go find these lovely, amazing makers. I already found them for you. I already found them for you. All right. Uh, okay, a little drink here. Um, quick announcement. If you are a part of my email list, you already know this because I've sent an email already. Uh, I'll continue, continue, continue to send emails. Oh, Weston's fussy. I'll continue to send emails about this. Um, but the mystery cal is coming up and it's going to be in October. And the cow is going to run October 8th through the 29th. So it's going to be especially for the, the size of the project, which I'm going to call kind of a mid-size project. Uh, it's going to have a long run. So it's going to be chill. It's going to be chill, which we like, especially as we uh, get closer and closer to the holidays. So um classes are going to be in-person classes so if you live close by to myself um they're going to be at casting on in downtown appleton and they're going to be on sunday so october 8th 15th and 22nd the way that the virtual class is going to work is that you are going to be have released to you on the sundays so the new section, uh, the new clue for each uh, section of the cow will be released on Sundays. If you are part of the class, the virtual class, you will also get released a full tutorial step-by-step -step video for that section. And then on Mondays, we'll also do, you'll have the opportunity to join in a live class so that you can ask questions and show me what you're doing. And I can say, looks amazing. Or what's going on there? <laughs> Which is one of the really great things about a class is having someone to talk to and ask questions to. So uh, after our experience last year, I decided that that would be the, the best way to get you um, additional uh, information and really detailed instruction, but then also have opportunity for um, chatting and community and asking your specific questions. So there you go. Um, I will also give a link to my newsletter below 
sign up there if you're interested in like all the details and all the reminders because they'll all be coming through email um, as well as prices and all of that. Yeah. So I am extremely excited. I'm going to be calling for testers. No, I've already called. I've already called for testers on it. So yay. Um, I was going to say something and I changed my mind. <laughs> move on to questions. Questions, questions. If you would like to submit a question, I would love for you to do that. There is a link in the description box below. Uh, all you got to do is click on it. It's going to pull up a Google form, I think is what they're called. And it just asks you, what's your question? <laughs> and you don't have to share your name. Uh, you don't have to uh, give any details about yourself. It's all free. You just pop your question in there, and then that helps me stay organized so that I can make sure uh, I, I have everybody's questions gathered up. So but I would love to answer your questions. So please, please, please ask, ask away. It brings me so much joy. So question number one. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. I started a scarf for fall, and now that I'm a couple feet in, I've realized that my chain is pulling the bottom of my scarf tighter than the rest of the fabric. What happened, and is there a way to fix this? Friend. Oh, hello. Are you circling back? You're not alone. You are not alone. This is a very common problem. And this is one of those problems that I think we like to attribute to beginners. We like to think, oh, this is only an issue for beginners, but that's not the case. Um, this happens to lots of people and, and persists as a challenge for lots of people. So don't feel like just because you're a beginner, and I don't know if you are a beginner, but if you are a beginner and you're like, ugh, it's just a me problem. It's not just a you problem. This is a, a very normal problem. So, a couple things. A, this is best fixed before you start, <laughs> which is the bummer. The bummer of an answer for this one um, because you're already a couple feet in. Um, but I'm going to give you a suggestion. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know if this is going to work. But at this point, your options are leave it and have your scarf like, oh, tuck in at the bottom or um, frog it back to the beginning or do what I'm going to suggest and just see if it works. And if it works, amazing. And if it doesn't, you are going to have to frog it back anyways. So here's what you can try. Um, go ahead and go back to that starting chain, untie the knot of your slip knot, and then pull back your chains. I have not tried this before. Uh, I, I, I think I'm pretty positive that it's going to leave the bottom, um, it's going to look different than it would if you had your starting chain there. Um, but it should allow your fabric then to lay flat. Depending, okay, now I'm getting another idea. Depending on how extreme your, uh, your, your bottom is pulling in, you could try blocking. So maybe that's, maybe that's a best, stupid fly, maybe that's the best first option. Go ahead, even though you're not done, put a plastic stitch marker in your work, in your live stitch. Just wet block or however you would block, depending on your yarn, um, the, the bottom of the scarf at least. You, I mean, if you're several feet in, you don't have to block the whole thing, but block the, you know, get the bottom good and wet and then give it a good block. Um, and see if that will lay it out. 
I think that's option number one. Number two is to ravel back that chain and see then A, if your stitches are okay, and B, if, um, if it gives you a nice flat edge. If it gives you the flat edge, but you don't like the look of the edge, my suggestion would be to add some fringe at the end. You could go back and try to pick up and stitch like a row of single crochets there and see what that looks like. That's a possibility. So that's my suggestion for trying to fix the scarf you've already started. Um, my suggestion for the future is start differently. Lots of people try really hard. They say like, oh, uh, my gauge is off or my chain is too tight. And so I'm just, I'm just going to be all loose. Ah, that's hard to do, guys. It's real hard to do. And it's, I guess it's not hard to do, but it's hard to do consistently. So instead of trying to make your body behave differently, your hands, you know, than what they would naturally do, um, use your tools to do it instead. So once you meet gauge, go up a hook size or two just for your chain. So do your chains in, okay, so let's say, for example, um, your, you've met gauge with an H hook, five millimeter, go up to a five and a half or a six millimeter just for your chain, chain your 20 chains or your 200 chains with the bigger hook. Then before you even do your first stitch, go ahead and put on your five millimeter, your H hook and work back into your chains with the correct hook size. Um, and that should um, open up those chains and make them lay flatter. Now, you might, first of all, then look at your, uh, your chains now that you know that this is a problem before you're so far in, because then if you need to frog back, it doesn't feel quite as bad. Um, but if that's not enough, go up even more. It's fine. It's totally fine. So try to uh, notice and fix it before you're very far in. I would love to know. I would love to know if my suggestion of um, pulling back the chains works and what it does to the bottom of your fabric. I may have to give it a try just to see. <laughs> Okay, question number two. Uh, I have a question about organizing yarn. I have grown a large, at least for me, stash of yarn, I assume, and I'm not sure what the best way to store and organize it is. Any tips? Of course I have tips. All right, this, first of all, I want to say that this is very personal. Uh, it has a lot to do with what yarn you have, how much yarn you have, how much space you have. Do you have a dedicated craft space? Do you not have a dedicated craft space? Do you, uh, do you have places to store all of the stuff, all of the yarn you have? So I guess maybe my first tip is going to be go through your yarn. I did this at the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah, end of last year. I did this recently-ish. <laughs> and what I did was I pulled out all, and I mean all of my yarn. So I have yarn in a closet. I have yarn in a dresser. That's what that's called. I have my yarn wall. I have a, 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 currently been in the basement. I pulled them all out and I got out all the yarn. And then I was really honest with myself about did I love the yarn and would I use the yarn? And if the answer was no, then I moved it on to, I, I rehomed the yarn. So 
uh, I put it all in bins. And then I happened to have a, um, a former student who had taken a couple of my classes and I knew that she really enjoyed yarn craft, but did not have an extensive yarn budget. And so I reached out to her and said, look, I have this yarn. I'm going to get rid of it. Would you like to go through it and take whatever you want? Um, and she said, yes. And so I gave a whole lot of it to her, which felt fantastic because it lifted the weight off of me <laughs> for having to find a place to store yarn that I wasn't really going to use. And it gave her the opportunity to create more. Um, so it was really a win-win. Um, and then I donated the rest of it. There are a couple places here in town. Schools are a great place to donate. Um, our university has a craft space here that you can donate craft supplies. Um, so I think the first step is to go through and make sure you really love everything you have because there's no sense in finding a storage solution for stuff that you don't like or feel meh about. Right? Um, another great solution is if you're not willing to get rid of it is to take the stuff that you feel lukewarm about and just like whip out some projects real quick, like hats and scarves and stuff like that, and then donate those um, to move them on to people who uh, might enjoy them. There are also places uh, for yarn de-stashing places where you can sell yarn and then you could sell that yarn to get money to buy other yarn. Yes. Yes. I encourage that. Um, all right, but let's talk about the actual, uh, storage of the yarn. I think the first thing you need to do is n go through your stuff, see what you have, decide what you want to keep. And then look at how much you have left and find a place. It would be ideal. And I know, I know that ideal is not possible for everyone, but it would be ideal if it was one place. Find a place to stash your yarn. It does not have to be on display. It can be shut away in a closet somewhere uh, down in your basement. Like it doesn't have to be some like gorgeous display but find a place. And here's why I say a place, because when you have yarn stashed, or at least when I have yarn stashed in 10 places, when I go to look for yarn, I usually go to maybe like one or two of the places. And then I forget about the yarn that's stashed away other places. And then I don't use that yarn. So it's ideal if you have one place, because then when you're looking for yarn, it's all there and you can just go through what you have. Then my second suggestion for storage is put it in plastic. Now, I hate, I hate saying this because I'm not a fan of plastic. Um, it's, it's not good for the environment, but it is good for your yarn because it's good at keeping wasp, wasps, 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 no moths and other bugs out of your yarn and it is good for accidental damage. So I have a student who her day job is she runs a company who that um, goes in after fires and cleans up because obviously it's a mess. Well, hopefully it's a mess and it didn't just burn everything. Anyways, I digress. And she said, here's the thing, plastic containers, they don't burn as easily as things like cardboard. And let's say my kitchen caught on fire, right? Knock on wood. If firefighters came in and had to spray down that side of the house, the only place I have yarn in my basement, which is where the water would go, is directly under that. And if 
my yarn is in sealed plastic bins, it's not going to get wet. If my basement floods, it's far less likely to get wet if it's in sealed plastic. The other thing that she mentioned, which I would not have thought about, is smoke damage. Uh, whether you're somebody who likes to burn a fire in the fireplace or have someone in your life who is a smoker um, or something happens and there's smoke in your house, uh, your yarn will be at far less risk of smoke damage if it's in plastic bins. So individual yarn can be wrapped in plastic. It's a great way to keep skeins like skeins together, whether you're just like in Ziploc bags or like I know a lot of my yarn I get from dyers comes already in the plastic bags. Um, so especially if it's going to be stored away, keeping it in plastic is a great idea. Um, and then organizing your yarn. I would organize, I see, I see on the social medias, all of these displays of people with these gorgeous yarn walls, and then they've got it all like in rainbow, uh, colors or like, look at all these neutrals. Um, I do not organize my yarn in that way because when I go for a project, I am not thinking what color yarn do I need. I am thinking what weight of yarn do I need. So my yarn, generally speaking, is organized by weight, not color. Now, once I organize it by weight in an ideal world, then I would organize it by color and or brand. I do recommend keeping like uh, yarn together so that when you are looking for a project, if you are, want to make a cardigan and you need five skeins of yarn, you know which of your yarns you have five skeins of. <laughs> You're not wondering uh, where, how much of that yarn you have. And then you're not being like, well, I know I have five skeins of it, but I don't know where those five skeins are. And so I'll get started. And then like, you can never stink and find that fifth skein. You don't want to do that. So keep them together by weight. First, this is my recommendation. Whatever works for you, though, is what works for you. And you might try one system for a while and be like, that worked great. Now it works less great and I'm going to change. That's okay. Um, so by weight, by color, and then by uh, dyer or brand, and then by color. That would be my recommendations. So uh, am I awesome at keeping my yarn stash perfectly organized? Nope, not at all. But so don't be so hard. On, don't be hard on yourself. But it is super helpful when it is organized and you go to look for something and you know right away where it is and how much you have and if you have enough or if you need to look for something else. So there you go. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, it's been lovely shitty chatting. I have a lot of computer work to do, a lot of computer work to do, but gosh darn it, I've been avoiding it and I'm going to stop that. I don't want to, but I'm going to. So I hope you have something more exciting to do today than computer work and that you have a marvelous day. Thank you so much for chatting with me and happy crafting.